All right, let's clear um, DOS, the C3, so the first map, map C, and the third difficulty. Remember to don't take any of the buff, because if you want all the rewards, you must clear it without, and the operators will be this. Just uh, Lapland, Hoshi, Stronger Caster, and a Nightingale. Lapland is mainly to silence um, the defense crusher, because else um, he will um, uh, stun your defender and then leak. So immediately Lapland here, face on the left side. Then Caster here, face on the left side to charge the skill. Now deploy. Let's wait. Because you can get uh, DP just in time. So deploy ranged units first. And then uh, defender. I mean, this is not a must do step since on this stage there are no ranged units. Um, this one is a AoE damage, so it's not counted as a ranged unit. But uh, yeah. Still do that um, to learn because it's a really good habit in our clients uh, to deploy ranged units first and then ground units. Uh, because in the 99% of the situations, uh, that uh, uh, will save you. Since uh, ranged units will target the last unit you, def you deploy. As you can see, they are really tanky on this game mode, super tanky, so you know, it requires you to have a lot of DPS. It's like a reverse. Um, Reverse contingency contract. Like everything by default is at the maximum difficulty, and with the buffs you take, you reduce its difficulty. So it's not like a contingency contract where you take um, the tags to make it more difficult, but here is you take tags to make it less difficult. A still a bullshit event because the last few stages is impossible to do. It requires to have really really good operators. Like, uh, it's a really, really game mode for end, uh, end game players. Like, uh, for newbies, don't even try to challenge it, um, just to get the skin and uh, get rid of, uh, rid of from the event. Your main job here ju is just to get the skin, cardigan skin. Don't pay attention, don't try to get the mats or lumen D. Anyways, C3 done. Pretty simple. Alright, time to clear the B3, um, same, we don't take any risk, and the boss is the, f like the version, uh, uh, easiest version, you can see there are three, uh, three triangles, right? Each one will make the boss harder to kill. So let's just go, this is the first version, these are the units, we just need um, um, Hoshi, Lapland, two of your uh, Golden Glow, Aya, um, Nightingale, and a Vanguard, since we need a bit of DP here. It's pretty really simple to deal with the boss, so we can just, uh, first of all, deploy Vanguard here to gain DP. Then immediately Hoshi here. If you want, you can bring Shining as well. Now, after the boss used the ceiling skill, just deploy Golden Globe. Remember to let the boss use the ceiling skill first, because uh, the boss will use it globally on the last operator you deployed. Now just keep get DP, deploy the Nightingale here, face on bottom side first, wait the boss to use the ceiling skill again on oh, Nightingale, okay, and then deploy Aya here to destroy it. Once uh, you have enough DP, just deploy Laplander here, face on bottom side. That's all we need, guys. So Laplander beside uh, here to deal a bit of uh, DPS uh, is mainly to bait the boss uh, ceiling skill, so we'll seal her. And Aya will clear it. But beside this is because when the boss dies, he will use a skill, uh, which is like um, will keep summon the flying flares. These flares will go toward the last operator you deployed. If that fl uh, flare touches the operator, will immediately make a really big explosion, dealing tons of arts damage. As you can see, these flying flares here. They are going to Lapland. You can see this uh, orange line connecting her and the flare. So if this flare manages to go here, she will die. I mean, will be deal tons of big explosion, uh, arts damage explosion, so killing all the operators here around. Now just keep go. Okay. 
So if you want, uh, you could bring uh, Shining, deploy here from some bottom side. Don't deploy anyone else close to the boss, because once the boss dies from the first uh, phase, the boss will immediately seal all the surrounding operators. Operators in inside 1.7 uh, blocks of radius. So all these units will be mm, sealed. Now, Hoshi will probably die. Yes, but no, no, no need to worry about this. Because your arts, the arts caster will just finish the job. Yeah, here the defense crusher one shots. As I repeat, is literally at the difficulty of the full risk continuously contract. Not at this stage though. The third one and the fourth one are the hardest. Anyways, last enemy, let's just kill. And here we go. Really simple. Let's clear A3 with the um, uh, AFK, AFK strategy. And uh, this stage is really hard. I don't advise uh, who, who is not a veteran player to try it. And these are the units. Basically just uh, two vengers to gain off DP. And kill the first two enemies. Hoshi, Seria. Um, how's it called? Skadi Alter, Aya Alter, Nightingale, Golden Glow, Aya, and Typhon second skill. Last three slots, up to you. If you have the module for all of them, just to bring them. And let's do this. Remember to don't pick any buff. So it has the highest difficulty. First of all, Vanguard here to gain DP. Second Vanguard also here to kill the enemies. And gain DP. Now, once the boss spawns, Hoshi here face on the left side. And when the boss walks here, we'll immediately use the sealing skill. Once the boss, you, after the boss uses the se healing, sealing skill, deploy a altar here to charge the skill and the heal. Keep getting off DP. With the help of uh, Myrtle's healing, passive healing, Texas can survive and kill this enemy. Now just to get more DP, deploy Typhon here face on the left side. And charge the skill. Use it. Then deploy Nightingale here face on top side to heal. Okay, as you can see, we need a lot of healing. This enemy is super annoying, even more annoying than the boss in my opinion, because it does tons of damage even with the Toshi having 1000 and above um, and above uh, defense. Now get more DP and immediately deploy. Let the boss use the healing skill on this uh, Nightingale and then deploy um, Aya here, traditional Aya caster. To kill this chain, this seal. So now this Nightingale can go back to heal. After you did this step, deploy, I mean get a DP, you can retreat this one, deploy uh, Scuddy Alter here face on any direction you want to buff. Now Golden Glow here face on top side. And in the end, get enough DP, then you can retreat Myrtle to deploy Seria here as last operator, guys. This is really important, last operator Seria. And you also need a pretty high level Sarah to survive and don't die during the phase change of the boss. So now, since Sarah is the last operator we deploy, we'll always bait the seal in attack, as you can see. But our DPS will be able to kill the seal. Um, remember how, the how does the boss work when he's changing phase? He will basically, first of all, use the chain seal skill on the all the surrounding, on a 3x3 three, three three area, having the center of the boss. So 3x3 three three around him. That's why we, do, we don't deploy anyone here on this deployable ranger tile. Also this one will get sealed and damaged. And because now, since the boss is stronger, when the boss is changing phase, we'll keep summon the fireballs. Selecting the last target to deploy, and when the fireball reaches the target, we'll explode, dealing arts damage. How much damage? 2000 arts damage. That's why we don't deploy anyone here. Because when the fireball reaches the target, we'll deal a explosion of a two blocks so two blocks from here one two until here but thank god Aya and the nightingale are not inside this two by two radius so that fireball will only damage Sarah and since it does 2000 damage Sarah having 25 of uh, arts defense so resistance 2000 damage minus 25 percent is only 1500 damage Sarah has a 3300 HP so 
she can survive and then let him get healed in time because the distance between one fireball and the other one summoning is five seconds so the boss cannot like one shot but if the fireball explodes close to a ranger unit that ranger unit 90 percent of the cases will just die from the explosion since it's too strong if you want you can just use this um Phantom of Nightingale somewhere on the map during the phase change, so the boss will just bait the fireball to that. For example, you can just deploy it here. But we don't need that. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, this is the fireball which will summon. And be careful because all the uh, operators on the on the one block radius close to the fireball will take the arts damage and uh, fire elemental damage. But anyways, you can see it's slowly, slowly going to our serum, but uh, we get killed by our casters, as you can see because my Typhon can deal double hit and the sense Typhon will always charge the attack and wait when the fireball spawns you can see Typhon will one shot boom pew gets one shot really simple so nothing to worry about now the boss will uh, go into the second phase during the second phase will levitate so grounding levi gr not uh, aerial unit but it's uh, flying you know just like the enemies on chapter uh, 9, 11, 9, 10 yeah and during the second phase, the boss will summon the Servant. When the boss HP drops under 50, or when the Servant dies, the boss will... Uh, if the Servant is still alive, the boss will absorb them, recovering some HP, and then fall on the ground. With my DPS, Golden Glow, Aya, Typhon, buffed by Scuddy Alter, we can... we are... I am pretty sure that you can kill the boss, uh, I mean, reduce the fall of HP before the boss can leak from Hoshi. So as you can see, we'll just uh, drop down on the ground here. Which later will, uh, uh, okay, absorb this uh, servant. Will do ranged attack when he's not getting blocked. But uh, since Sarah is our last operator we deployed, the ranged attack uh, AOE can only hit only Sarah. Now we'll get blocked by Hoshi, so we'll do melee attack, dealing still AOE damage, but the AOE radius is pretty small. It's only um, one bl one block, one dot three block. Um, now. The boss will use the skill periodically, which is a summon a special fireball going to the last operator to deploy, so still Seria. This fireball is more dangerous than the previous fireball. Why? Because this fireball does 10,000 arts damage, so don't let the boss this fireball as a skill explode, because the radius, uh, let me check again the wiki, should be, yeah, the radius is, is still the same. Is only two block radius, but that's 10,000 arts damage, so we'll instant kill my Sega. Anyways, uh, but since the fireball flies from here to Sega is uh, like a pretty slowly, our DPS can kill the fireball, so nothing to worry about. This is how this stage works, guys. I hope uh, if you don't have the units for the AFK guide, uh, but from this description of um, the mechanic of the boss. You, st you will know, you will find a way to clear it. Maybe instead of... Um, yeah, maybe you can just... Um, like, if you don't have this two limited, but you have one of them, you can just get the other one. If you don't have uh, a Yalter, I guess you can just change into... Maybe Honeyberry can also work, I didn't try, because uh, here we need a lot of healing to keep... Um, Hoshi alive. If you can use someone like Nien, so maybe with the manual trigger skill to survive the damage, maybe you can use a, use a Honeybear as well. Important is that you have enough damage, DPS to kill the boss and the fireballs. That's it. Alright, let's clear um, DOS with the third stage, so S3, without taking any buff with the high-end squad, not even AFK, because this stage is super super hard, so don't worry if you cannot clear it, uh, because this is for literally end-game uh, um, doctors, so yeah, literally don't worry about that. And the operators we're going to use uh, are these, with uh, just, uh, wait, okay, Keobi, Keobi second skill with the module, then Linear, Surdor, Nightingale third skill with the module. If it third skill doesn't care the level, to be honest, maybe a bit the mastery level, but I guess even level 7 can help because the main job is to reduce the resistance of, resistance of the boss. So Keobi can kill faster. Then we just need um, Sudran, Ines, Seria third skill, uh, Typhon third skill as well, mm, uh, Eya third skill. With the module, of course, and in the end, any strong medic. That's what we need. Let's do this. 
First of all, immediately deploy. In a sphere face on left side to gain DP and crowd control beat the first enemy. The crowd control in this stage is super important. Because without that, uh, you cannot uh, slow the enemies uh, because they will immediately rush, you can see, to the blue box. Um, so now Sudran here, face on top side. After the explosion, because if we deploy before the explosion, we just uh, die. Then deploy Nightingale here to heal. Immediately use the skill to increase the attack for more healing. Activate the Sudran skill to slow this enemy when uh, he's uh, uh, approaching. With a Mlinar skill to reach, fully reach him, so to, when you see the blade is uh, glowing. Okay. To kill. Now deploy Aya here, press on bottom side, retreat to Ines because else Ines will be killed by the uh, blade, the red blade, red whip. Now just wait. Okay, around now the boss will spawn, so deploy Surdo here, face on the outside. And just to use the Surdo skill to attack the boss. There's a small uh, um, trait we use in the, you can see, the ground fire. When, they, when it erupts, if there's an operator on top side, we'll immediately use an infrared attack toward the direction you pointed. So here, enemies affected by this attack will take 20% more arts damage, which is really, really important. Now, deploy Sega here to block and slow up the enemies. Okay, you can see the crowd co slow, crowd control from Seria, crowd control from uh, um, Sudran is really, really important. Activate uh, Sega skill when these enemies are around here. And just to use Aya skill to kill these enemies and QB skill to hit this one. Perfect. When this enemy dies, retreat to Seria and deploy Typhon here face on left side. You don't need the AI anymore, so retreat to Aya, deploy uh, Ifrit here face on bottom side to prepare. When this enemy are around the hero, just use a Sudran skill to slow. And deploy Ines here face on left side. Now the boss will use this, um, this skill again. Immediately use Typhon skill to kill this uh, seal, so Mariner can charge the skill and just use the skill when he's on. So Ines are here, Ines are skill to slow a bit them down. And then Tiffon will kill it, so Melina can deal a few attacks more to the boss. Now you can retreat the Ines, we don't need any more. But to keep uh, Melina's attack, uh, Tiffon's attack, actually just retreat the Tiffon's attack as well, because also with one shot. You, you must retreat Melina when the boss is using the seal. So as you can see around now. Okay, retreat, so we will summon this thingy. You can immediately redeploy, but before you must kill this thingy. So basically we just skip the redeployment time. Really, really useful. Instead of Ifrit, I tried using um, uh, Aya Alter, for example. It can work as well, but requires you to have uh, really good DPS, so like everyone max the level. So you don't need to worry about uh, um, healing. This way, using Ifrit, um, you don't need to worry about uh, DPS. You can master kill the boss, uh, because uh, Ifrit with the third skill uh, helping is really good. While if you miss a bit of healing, then just use uh, um, a Alter, for example, and uh, bring like more units for DPS. You still have two slots. Now, when the boss uh, arrives uh, here and uh, here, activate the uh, Kirby skill. No? Now, just wait a bit. Just deploy Surdo here, face on left side, immediately activate the Sudran skill, then Sarah here in preparation for the second phase. And activate uh, Surdo skill as well. Now, before the boss can use the ceiling skill again, we must kill the first phase. In fact, we're doing all our skills. But don't worry about the skill being charged in time or not for the second phase, because we're going to use the boss's weapon against himself. How? You can see the boss will immediately seal our operators, so immediately retreat Sudran and Surdo, before they can kill the seal. So your operators will kill the seal, you will be, in, in, be able to deploy them immediately again. But now, you must use a different skill to kill this seal on uh, Nightingale, activate uh, um, what is called Mlinar skill to kill the ball, because else uh, your operators will die, and then activate immediately, let's wait a bit, here deploy, wait a bit, okay, around now, activate the Sudran skill, uh, not a Sudran, sorry. Uh, Nightingale skill to big uh, burst heal and the Sudran here face on top side again. As you can see, the skill <laughs> we literally almost reset the skill duration. Now, just 
just wait. The Buster Reviver. Don't let this Fireball to go on Mlanar because Elsa will deal explosion, dealing tons of damage. Now, once the boss revives, Ines are here to do one auto attack to bind the boss for a moment, then immediately retreat and Aya here. So we leave on the ground this um, thingy of Ines, which will slow a bit the boss. Really, really important. And these servants will spawn. How does the boss second phase work? He will immediately summon some servants. Once the servant dies, and or, remember, or, once the boss HP drops under 50, he will immediately absorb all the servants on the field. So if you use the first tactic, first method, no servants again, no, no servants on the field, so he cannot absorb. He will absorb zero, but still absorb. This is the description of the skill. So he will absorb healing and then go on the ground, so not levitate anymore, and will do attacks. Which means we must reduce the HP now. So activate, not yet. Let's wait the skill to be ready. So run skill now. Okay. When crocodile spawn, Aya skill to burst. Perfect, just like this. Go, go, go. KOB skill as well. So you can see, once the HP... Okay, when is in the range of uh, Seria skill, activate a Seria skill as well. And when the boss drops on the field, you will be able to do ranged attacks. So deploy immediately a Phantom here. The Phantom taunt level is higher than Mlinar, so the boss cannot choose Mlinar's target anymore. So we'll do the ranged attack to the Phantom. During this phase, when the boss does a ranged auto attack, so we'll do explosion. So don't let the boss do auto attack on Mlinar, because else the explosion will just kill your operators. So just deploy the Phantom here to bait. As you can see, absorb the thingy. Now just let the boss here. If with a skill to reduce even more the resistance of the boss, we don't need to deploy. We don't need to retreat Aya and deploy like Sword here or Sword here from the right side to help, because we have Ifrit to help. Like in case you don't have enough damage to kill the boss, but I doubt you should be able to have enough damage. Just, but in case, just retreat Aya, deploy Sword here, but not here because one auto attack, melee auto attack can kill literally Sword. Deploy Sword here from the right side to kill. But if you use a Sword here now, be careful in the middle. Because there are still a lot of enemies to kill, they are not weaker than the boss. So remember to use the extra slots to help you. You can deactivate the Tiffon skill to charge it for later, so we don't need this physical damage anymore here. Come on, come on, just a kill. Nice, now kill the Fireball. This is the Giant Fireball, one of the boss's skill. If this Fireball hits some Mlanar, we'll do 2 radius, 2 blocks radius, 10,000 arts damage. So remember to kill this Fireball. Now, at this point, uh, um, I will require you to retreat uh, Aya, anyways, because uh, there are chain casters spawning from here. If you keep Aya here, the enemies will be able to hit here, chain caster everyone. Now, retreat the Ifrit as well and deploy the Tilopsis here face on bottom side. You can retreat this Phantom as well, since we don't have enough healing, so Tilopsis with the skill can help heal. If you have Aya Alter, it's even better. So just to deploy soldier here to kill this enemy since it's annoying. Okay, yeah, debuffed. Uh, he debuffed our Mlanar. It's totally fine. I mean, he debuffed our Tifa and Mlanar. It's totally fine. If you have uh, the module, so with the auto attacks, can heal, help heal uh, Nightingale as well. It's good, but if you don't have, it's fine. Now just retreat. Uh, Okay, now retreat uh, Ifrit, I mean Sordor, not need anymore. Deploy Ines here from the left side. Two chain casters. If you let, uh, if you let uh, both chain casters to hit your front line without an ending kill skill up, they will melt everyone. So what you have to do is to deploy a Phantom here. Let's wait a bit. Phantom here. To bait one of them, their auto, auto attacks. Remember to don't deploy the Phantom close to someone in the surrounding nine tiles because else the chain attack will chain. Now, Mlinar's uh, mm, debuff should, in theory, go away around this timing. So just activate the burst healing of uh, Tilopsis, burst healing, uh, I mean, burst damage from Mlinar, this operator to bind. He debuffed, but he's fine. You can just uh, use uh, Tiffon skill as well to help and stun. Okay, nice. After you kill them, it's not a problem, the damage anymore. So you can slowly, slowly kill the rest of the enemies. You can see, guys, the stage is not finished yet. The enemies are super strong. Now there's a hat and this enemy. This enemy is fine because you have a slow and a KOB. Mm, Mlinar will require a bit of time. So just slow them down. 
Activate the big healing. Activate the Kyogre skill. Activate the Inessa skill. And this damage is really annoying because he reduced the... Okay, activate the Surtur. I mean, uh, Seria. And activate the Mlinar. Last enemy, finally. And we are good to go. In theory, now we'll debuff my Mlinar since it has the highest attack. 1700. Nice. But he didn't manage in time. Here we go, guys. Oh, really, really super hard. And... Uh, but it's pretty... Stable. You can add the last two units. 52. Nice. Hope this video helped you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.